Do we have a gang sign? Yeah, that's right. I see. Yeah, that's right. Oh, how you make an M? Is that an M? I was gonna say we could do the upside down west. <laughs> what? Uh, they gonna say we throwing down west? Are they dropping west? Is that like an M? Million dollar nightmares. Y'all still sleep? Mondays, 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 Mondays. Wake up, silly. <laughs> Are you still sleeping? <laughs> oh, wow. What are you talking about? Questions? I ain't got no type. Uh, I know I ain't got no type. Uh, uh, my girlfriend's white, if that matters. But I, I like me some black girls and some black. I really like me some. We gotta start over. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got no type. <laughs> I ain't got no type. <laughs> she gonna be like, oh yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know, I just, I had always grown my hair out, but I didn't really like the style of it really. However, I did it. I tried short, he had I tried long, long. He had I tried the swoop. Curls. He, had I the, tried, uh, he had the skater hair. I don't know, <laughs> and I just like this, so. I don't know, that's just why. It's like a hairstyle I finally liked. <laughs> I was gonna ask how. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Please. Do that. Man, somebody pissed me off, so I went and copped it just to flip some. Feature but. money. Rap you money. Hear me? Rap money. Wow. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> well, when I was growing up, I considered myself high yellow, which I still <laughs> am during the winter time. I, I ain't really light skin until like mid March. <laughs> <laughs> then he's waffle colored. Yeah. Then I'm waffle colored, <laughs> lightly toasted. <laughs> well, that's that's another good question. I should have got drunk for this. Questions. Not for real. Um, cause I think this is why. All right. <clears throat> yes, I'm mixed, but I'm 25 percent black. So when you see me, when you look at me. But his daddy's dark. My daddy, he is dark. But that don't matter. That don't change my percentage. So when you look at me, you would think I'm white, right? Probably. And a lot of people are going to look at me and say I'm white. So I don't want to just confuse people and say it in my music. And then they be like, you know. I know. Oh, but like, see, like, okay, like me, like Logic. Like, Logic says it. And I don't have a problem with it because, like, I know, you know he's Logic mixed, over you. But it's just, exactly. Like, I don't want people to think I'm just forcing that in my music just to force it in my music. Like... I don't know. He's, I feel uh, y'all tell Logic. I said, stop telling people you mix because everybody knows it. <laughs> everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. Really? I'm sleeping. Am I sleeping? I don't know. No, no. We ain't gonna talk time. about it. I feel like I'm out of my mind. Oh yeah, he made that. Oh yeah, I fuck right. with you, Logic. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> Hearing it go first. Oh, he he already started. Hearing it, uh, it's just. I, I've been rap, I've been writing raps since I was like six or seven, like real young. But just hearing the music, uh, I mean, I grew up around it. Uh, my grandpa DJ, my mom used to rap, and I just always loved music. I used to be scared to write though, and then I finally learned how to start writing, and I started killing it with the pen. But it's an it's an escape for real. When I lived in Gary, my babysitters. Always was playing Three Six Mafia, <laughs> so I was always like I just like vividly remember like sipping on some scissor, like playing sipping, over and over and over in my head. Scissors, hey. And then uh, when I lived in Michigan City, clips dropped grinding. Yeah. And when I heard grinding, I was like, Oh Lord, it's on. One of the beats you'll never forget. Literally. Never. So I started like low key like writing stuff in my like little black notebook I stole from my mom. <laughs> and then, and uh, I never like spit nothing really. And then when we moved down here to like the Evansville area, uh, my brothers started rapping and stuff. And then out of nowhere, one day I was just like, let me get on a song. And from there it was history. History. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, it was all his idea. It wasn't really my idea. It He's was. Lying. All right. He's lying. Everybody's <laughs> So I, I started it and basically what I wanted to do was like, there's like, there's a, y'all know there's a lot of rappers in the world. He feel like everybody suck besides us. 
So he was like, shit, we the best. So shit, why not come together? Literally. Usually good idea. people don't link up, but you know. Literally. Shit. Like, that's what it was, was like, I was just sitting there one day and I was like, okay, the biggest part for me was like, I feel like when you're in a group with people, you can't be like people that's like constantly around each other. Best friend. So I was like, who's at least two rappers that I'm not around all the time, but I think they're dope. So I hit up Kizzy and I hit up Rob Beezy, R.I.P. Then we formed a hierarchy. And uh, I don't know, I just got tired of that name. So I ended up switching it over to Million Dollar Nightmares. And whenever I switched it to Million Dollar Nightmares, I like made it clear to everybody. I was like, look, I'm not the leader just because I started it. I don't like, I feel like I always end up in like leadership positions because like I start a lot of stuff. And like, it just, I just, I just always gravitate towards that leadership position. And I told everybody from the beginning, I was like, I'm not the leader. Everything, every decision is going to be mutual. I'm not going to be like, you got to do this, you got to do this. I'm going to let you do you. I'm going to do me and we're going to get to this money. And then we had got to the point where we were like talking a lot about adding people to the group. And one of the people that I knew 100% that Rye said he would put in the group was Dutchie. And Rye died. And that was the only person that like he specifically said put in the group. So I was like, let's get it. Kizzy agreed. I said, so we said, let's get it. I thought about adding some more people. And they was like, nah. Uh -uh. <laughs> so that's what it is. It's us three. Sure. I'm not saying we won't ever add nobody, but you got to come with the right For package. For now, we good. I got people. Literally, I, did I tell y'all there's literally people messaging the Million Dollar Nightmares Facebook saying, uh, are y'all looking for artists? I no, but I have I've had people hit me up like, hey, I'm trying to do a freestyle. I'm trying to, mm -hmm. how can I get in? People talking about trying to, uh, let me drop a million dollar Mondays. Oh, yeah. It's definitely a movement we started, for sure. And we only been doing it for two weeks. We knew with it. Man, Tory <laughs> Lanes, they, I feel like he already knew. But he's so dope. Like, he got like, I feel like when you do music and when you listen to music, like you're supposed to feel something. Like it's supposed mm -hmm. to make you feel something. A lot of music now, it ain't got no feeling. It's like everybody's saying the same mm -hmm. Dr. Seuss ass type of rap. But when you listen to him, it's like it make you feel something. Whatever song he's, whatever he's singing about, rapping about, like you feel that shit. And I respect his grind and I respect the journey that he's been on. And he got Please a nice don't let wave. me win, win, win. Yeah. <laughs> let a young nigga win. On everything. But yeah, he motivates right. me for real. <clears throat> I don't I don't really have like a set favorite artist. Uh I feel like my favorite artist is always like switching around. Like at one point it was Cole. Mm -hmm. At one point it was Sean. At one point it was Drake. At one point it was Vic Mensa. Vic Shout out to Vic. Underrated. Time is money. Underrated. Uh at one point it was Chance. Chance is dope. If I had to pick, like, one, like, if I had to pick one, I think I would, I think I would probably pick Yo Gotti. For real? Gotti? <laughs> really? <laughs> Look. Why? Like that shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. I fuck with Gotti. But why? Um, but. <laughs> there really ain't a good reason. Uh, just, I, just whenever I'm, like, riding in the car, like, I don't, like, I don't gravitate straight to like like Drake and Cole and Kendrick and I mean I forgot to mention Kendrick earlier but Kendrick was he was one of them at one point but like when I get in my car and like I'm just driving when I'm hitting the highway like heading somewhere the first thing I play is probably Yo Gotti CM7 then CM, CM9 Gotti do make you want to go get a bag I swear all set for sure I don't know, it's just, it's just motivation. Yeah. Yeah. I like music, like she said, where it just makes you feel something, you relate to it. And um, so like, and similar to like, kind of music I want to make, my favorite artist right now, which I talked to Brandon about it the other day, probably Joyner Lucas. Like, nice. I don't know how, you know, how known he is. He might be a little underrated, um, you know, and not as popular as some of the other artists. You know, like you, people are always gonna put Kendrick and Cole up there, and uh, for you know obvious reasons. But Joyner Lucas, just man, like his his music is just it can relate to anybody, any situations. Mm -hmm. Like, and his on top of that, his visuals are just 
out of this world cold. Like I never seen anything like it. So that's probably my favorite artist right now. Um, but yeah. Yeah, he's nice. Yeah. I ain't even gonna say Garbage. it's just mumble rap. It's, Garbage. Man, that shit is trash. And it's it's only trash because I feel like music at the end of the day is supposed to be art. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't I can't even think right now. No, but that's a good that's a good direction to go with it. Yeah, it, it's supposed to be art. And I feel like if anybody can do it, it ain't art. Like if a thousand motherfuckers could paint the Mona Lisa, that shit would not be special. I, I would go take so, my niece right now and tell her to scribble on some paper and you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, like so it's do, tell them what you said about the uh, the classroom. I forget. <laughs> look, okay, so I feel like when we was all in high school, you know, everybody went to class and shit like that. But, you know, we if you were AP. smart, we, exactly, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I'm smart as fuck, you know what I'm saying? So, we go and walk into our classes upstairs, and, you know, you got everybody, you know what I'm saying, at, in the slow class, and you can walk past and be like, hey, damn, they, they in the slow class. You got so 1.8. Right, like, for real, I feel like motherfuckers just walked in the slow class and was like, hey, y'all niggas is rapping. We man. signing everybody. We signing everybody in this classroom. Fuck the AP students. We want the dumb ones. And I ain't even just saying everybody that do mumble rap is dumb, but it's like, y'all not, what are y'all yeah, talking about? Yeah. It's like, the, literally, it's that cat in the hat, Dr. Seuss ass shit up. It don't take no effort no more. Like, right. I ain't saying people gotta just take, you know what I'm saying, three hours, four or five hours to write a track, but motherfuckers just literally going in there just saying a bunch of bullshit, Whatever. long as that shit rhyme. Anything. For real. Smack, rap, cat, pat. <laughs> shit, like, that shit flame. No, it's not. <laughs> whenever people talk mumble rap, they automatically like go towards Migos and personally I like Migos yeah no nah, like Migos are I'm, humble I'm screw screw the Migos all day I, like honestly <laughs> to me I don't even consider them mumble rap 100% but for nah. some reason that's just what people go to like consider mumble rap and I really like Future but Future is mumble rap because I do not know what he be saying not for real nobody knows I mean but people turn up to it so I guess it's cool but that's just, I feel like that's just not what it's supposed to be. It's just a produced game now. It didn't turn into where, like, mm -hmm. it don't matter what the artist say, as long as the beat smack, and long as it got a cool-ass filter on there, then that's what it is. And that shit's <clears throat> whack. I, I just miss the days where artists, you gotta, you gotta be special to stand out. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci yeah, gang, Gucci like gang, Gucci gang. Right there. How you do a whole hook with them two words? I can't rock with that, like. Do you ever get nervous? That's what I was thinking. Um. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie and say no, but I feel like if you don't get nervous, no. you're more likely to mess up. Yeah. You're not ready if you don't get nervous. Like there should always but, be like a little bit of anxiousness. But at the same time, you gotta know like we ain't even hit the level we're gonna Right. Play. So yeah. it's almost like nervous now, butterflies. Like, it's yeah. like whenever you first meet a girl and you like, oh, she the one, you know what I'm saying? That's what that's the feeling we get when we get on stage. It's like, or when we about to get on stage, it's like, oh snap. This is where I'm supposed to be. You know Show what everybody what you really have. And, but yeah, like we're not nowhere near the level we're gonna be. So I'm sure we'll be more nervous like as soon as we get there. But. The best thing about doing music is logging into TuneCore. And even if it's just like one or two people at a time, you know what I'm saying? Seeing somebody like buy your, like buy your music when you ain't even been promoting it. Like when I log into my TuneCore and I see somebody buying a song I dropped in 2015 that I have, haven't posted since 2016, like that's, that. I feel like that's the best part is like people that like go back and like actually care, you know what I'm saying? When I see my Spotify plays on old songs still going up, that's the best part. The worst part is when I drop something and the views don't go up fast like they haven't like before in, or in certain situations like when I drop something and like I'm expecting it to do numbers and it don't do the numbers I'm expecting mm -hmm. and I'm just like don't do the numbers it deserves right yeah that's for sure the worst <laughs> part best part mm. I don't know I think it's just kind of like a stress reliever right, more than anything but at the same time also kind of the opposite of what you said when you drop it and it does get the love you know that's definitely the best part like makes you feel like you're on the right track where you need to go but yeah I think for me the best part is like the interactions with people like 
you can be somewhere and not even know that nobody in that area even know you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh yeah, you Dutch. I'm like, what? Like, you know who I am? Yeah. Or like when people really like treat you like a fan. Like I had a chick come up to me, ask me to sign her titties. Like that was like, <laughs> I was turned what like my first pair it? of boots. <laughs> <laughs> my first pair of titties, bring them here. <laughs> I think that's like the best part. Like just when people hit you up and let you know like your music really like influences them or like gets them through stuff. Like, cause we ain't made it. So, you know what I'm saying? To be on the local level, or no, nah, I ain't gonna say that because we ain't on a local level. Scratch that. But but every rapper is a local rapper to somebody. Exactly. But to be, you know, trying to ascend, I say that, and people really still pay attention, <laughs> especially when it's like an oversaturated game. I feel like it definitely it just makes you feel like you're doing something right. The worst part. Oh, there's a lot of worst parts for me, but just dealing with the bullshit. It's like when you really start getting into it. You really realize like how fake this game can be and like a lot of the people like that you looking up to and you think they got this, they got that, they doing this, they doing that, they real, they it ain't none of that. Mm -hmm. For real. Like I've been around y'all niggas. <laughs> I really I know the truth. <laughs> for real. <laughs> it ain't necessary at all, but I can't say that I wouldn't do it. If you got it, I don't I don't got because that shit right now. <laughs> we yeah. we came from nothing, you feel me? Like so if we get to the point where we can go drop a hundred bands on a chain, drop a hundred bands on a chain. For real. Flex. Why not? As long as your family's straight, do you. That's the most important part. You gotta mm -hmm. secure home first. I feel like a lot of niggas ain't doing it for the right reason, but shit. Yeah, I definitely will drop a hundred on the chain. When I, I get saw it. when they turned 45 and their music stopped coming out and they broke. And <laughs> you just see. Sure. Yeah, you gotta, You're supposed to be straight. You gotta be on that uh, four four four. He dropped so much real nigga knowledge on that. I fumbled it. <laughs> uh, I owe my mama a Lexus. I remember growing up when I was a kid. Uh, my mama always wanted a Lexus, so I'm gonna get her a new thing. Uh, I owe my brother forever. Uh, I remember whenever we was like. I would say like middle school, high school, like it was always my oldest brother that was like taking us like school clothes shopping and stuff, you know what I'm saying? So whatever he want, he got it. Uh, I'm gonna have to buy a, a, a Liger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't, I don't feel like I really need nothing. Like, yeah. I don't know. I'm gonna just have to wait and see. I think I got like some pride <laughs> things that I gotta get like a uh, I never forget there was this one woman like my mama always got money like that's she that, that was her thing get money so there was this one time my mom got home from prison and uh <laughs> we went to this car <laughs> wait <laughs> what? you can't just jump over that no I wasn't I'm about to finish <laughs> she the said story. it's so regular there was this one time my mama got home from prison <laughs> so wait okay let me start over no seriously this is some real nigga shit so look mama always got money you know what I'm saying so she went to prison you know what I'm saying motherfuckers fucked her money up like she didn't get out to the bag you know what I'm saying that she wanted and she was always the type where she can go buy whatever she wanted so we was at this car lot, you know what I'm saying, just searching for cars, and there was this one car. It was an 08 C, 07 Sebring hardtop convertible. It was like baby blue. And she wanted that motherfucker, and she couldn't get it. Like, And that was the first time I like seen my mama like, damn, you want something, you can't get it. And you know what I'm saying, she cried about that shit. She, she didn't even know that I seen her crying, but I'm like, yeah, when I get it, I'm, I got to get you that for sure. And outside of that, it's just... I feel like I've met a lot of like real niggas that just ain't been in position. Not even just real niggas, just real people in general, like talented people. So I'm all about putting my people in position, like the team, making everybody bosses. That's how you never fall mm -hmm. off. For everybody around you, a mogul. For everybody around you getting money and you stop getting money, we all gotta eat. They gonna put you back in position, or they For wasn't real? your niggas yeah. from the beginning. For real. That's what I want to do with my money. My main thing is definitely. Before anything, obviously, um, take care of my daughter. That's for anything in the world. Uh, spoil her, that's for sure. Um, and really, honestly, you know, I, I got love for Evansville and everything, but I definitely plan to move from here. That's 100% the next mission. Um, you know, not anywhere too far, you know, where we can still work and, you know, get to the, where we need to be before we can make our moves, but, um, you know, relocate at some point, that's for sure. But 
definitely family first more than anything. And then, like you said, you know, if you get to that, you know, at one point, maybe we can start splurging on some of that other stuff. But it, it's that's definitely the last thing on my mind. That's not a good question because I don't think you need to be anywhere certain. There's not a specific place. People will. I mean, what's what's the city restrooms from? Like to to Mississippi. Tupelo. Tupelo. There you go. Like it's it's yeah, like yeah, you, you can't chase you can't chase a location because that's like that's like all the people that jumped into Bitcoin after it blew up. It's already it's too late. Uh -huh. So if you if you go move to Atlanta right now thinking you're gonna go to Atlanta and blow up, you probably not. You gotta get onto it early. So the the best thing you can do, honestly, in my opinion, is hit all these big cities that's already like making like making movements and bring that back to your city uh -huh. and then blow your city up. Million dollar nightmares. Y'all still sleep? Million dollar Mondays.